Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is James and I'm continuing on with this Barnstormer 25S um, RC plane kit build. So my last video I talked about um, using Monocoat and the color scheme I want to use. And so in this video I'm going to start covering with the Monocoat. So I'm going to start with the wing because the wing is, to me the wing is sort of the most challenging um, part of it because it does have the wing tips. Um, it's difficult to kind of and it's a little bit tricky to use Monaco to get it around the compound curves and such. So I'm going to start with the wing and sort of get that knocked out and get it out of the way. And then I can have kind of an easier time when I get to the rest of the plane. All right, so if you're following along in this video um, series, um, remember last time I put on these little um, uh, control rod tubing um, to be used for my tail gear um, connections. And that came out pretty good. I just wanted to show you that. And I will cut this little mi middle part out, but that's done. The other thing I did was I painted the front, the firewall, with just some black paint. And of course I covered it. I didn't want to get paint all over the rest of it. I wanted to be careful with that because Monaco doesn't stick too well to paint or to a painted surface that I know of. Um, so I, I did mask this off, as you can see here. Okay, so you can see I... Let me get out of here is I went and I masked, I masked it off and I gave myself a little bit of room around the firewall here. And the reason that the reason I did that was because like I just mentioned, I don't think monocoat sticks very well to a painted surface. So I'm planning on when I take my monocoat, I'm going to go ahead and it's going to wrap around the edge a little bit. So hopefully it'll kind of adhere to, to the wood, to that exposed wood right here. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and set, um, set the fuselage aside and um, get to start working on the wing. Okay, well to start with, I'm gonna be using this olive drab monocoat, and I'm probably gonna do all the olive drab. I'll do the wing, and then I'll do the fuselage and everything else, and then I'll come back, and I'll do probably like the, the highlights, I guess, with the orange. Um, and I may use some white and blue also, but we'll see where it goes. It depends on how it looks, you know, kind of play it by ear. So I'm gonna go ahead and get ready, and we're gonna start on the wing. So, um, but the first thing I'm gonna do is use a tack cloth, and I'm gonna get rid of Try to get, make sure you get all the dust off of your surface here. This helps the monocoat really um, stick better. Another good way of doing this is using sort of like a little shop vac. And I have a little brush on this one, so you can get one of these anywhere. And it's good to sort of get the dust off. Kind of need a lot of room to work with monocoat when you're doing this type of thing. It's kind of awkward trying to get it on video and such, so I'll do my best. Pull some of this, open this up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to have to work around this area. This is going to be a little, oops, this is going to be a little bit difficult to work around because I got all this junk on there. But I'm going to start with the bottom. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of working room on the ends. I want a couple inches on each tip, wing tip, and then maybe an inch or so on the um, on the leading and trailing edge. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of snip this. Hopefully this will work. Just give myself just a little bit to go around these control horn or control rods or linkages, whatever you want to call them. I'm not super concerned about this. If I have to, I can just kind of come back and patch it. All right, so if I can show this, let's see here. Uh, so if you look here, oops, not probably the best light. 
I just kind of cut around this little area and hopefully it'll be close enough and like, like I said I can come back and I'll patch it if I need to. Okay so I'm ready to go. I'm going to start with the middle. I'm going to tack it down in the middle and then I'm going to work my way outward um, this direction. Again if you were doing, if you had the wings were two pieces, again you would start sort of on the um, on the inside and work your way outward. So I'm going to go ahead and I've tried, I lined everything up as close as I can. So what I'm trying to do is I tack it down in the middle, I tack it down on the on the tips, on the ends, <clears throat> and then I go and I sort of anchor it along the front and the back just to sort of pin it down and kind of like I'm making a drum. And the nice thing about Monocote is that it um, it's pretty forgiving as long as you don't make too much of a um, you know too many creases but <clears throat> sometimes it's difficult like this area here looks like right now it's going to be kind of difficult because I kind of got this mashed up little spot but that's all going to come out once I heat it up so um, but the first thing I want to do is going around the edges like I said and I'm just going to just carefully start in the middle like I did on there and then kind of go to this middle Just kind of work your way around and kind of tack it down on the edges. And then once you sort of have it sort of established, then you can go back and start kind of dealing the details. Monaco is one of these things like when it's working for you, it's great. When it's being bad, then it's really bad. So you do have to be really careful when you use a heat gun because um, I've made the mistake where you, you let it sit too long and it'll just melt right through it. So you got to be super careful, but just watch it and go slow. I'm using, going to use the low setting and try to work some of these some of these uh, wrinkles out of here. All right, well, I've got the lower part of the wing or the bottom <laughs> wing covered, and now I'm ready to go ahead and do the top part of the wing. And I've already cut my monocoat to fit on here. And again, I go a little bit, I go a couple inches over on the, um, on the wing tips, and I go an inch or so, maybe, you know, somewhere around there, an inch, inch or two maybe on either, on either leading edge and trailing edge um, to give myself enough working material. So um, again, like I did on the, um, on the underside, I'm going to start in the middle, okay? And I'm going to anchor, anchor it down here in the middle. And then I'm going to go along, what I do is I pull it along the main, the main um, spars. And that's where I'm going to tack, do my first tack down on the tip. So I'm going to pull it down and, and tack, it to the, tack it to this point here. Same thing on that side. And then I'll tack it down again on the tip a little bit. And then I'll go and I'll tack it down and I'll work, work back and forth and I'll tack it to the, um, to the edges. 
and then I'll just basically kind of go around and start to tighten it up from there. Okay, so the tips are a little bit tricky because um, they do kind of have these compound curves and such, so it's hard to get the monocoat to, to uh, kind of make those bends. It's very hard to do that with an iron. So um, the way to do this is to take up your heat gun, and normally I would wear a glove. You know, I got some gloves like this. You can get like a barbecue glove or whatever, so you don't burn your fingers. But I'm gonna try to just be careful. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this up. I'm gonna hold it like this and pull it as I heat it, and it should hopefully stretch and sort of form on there. Takes a little practice. So I heat it up and I let it cool off. And I'll do another one. But be careful because every time you heat it up, you're going to loosen it up where you just did it. So you have to be sort of very careful. And I'm, it's hard to tell, but I'm actually pulling pretty hard with my, with my index finger and my thumb. See how that works really nicely like that. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and hit it with the iron and hopefully I can get some of these creases out of here. Alright, so I'll, I'll continue to work with this, but you can see how that kind of really helps get that nice and smooth. I have a little bit of, some little bit of creases right in here, but I'll, I'll work those out. What you can do is if you use the, your iron, you can actually kind of press them, press them in and kind of get rid of them. You gotta be careful though, because if you press too hard, then you'll sort of restretch it, and then when you take your iron off, you'll have more wrinkles. So, all right. So one thing I wanted to show you is something that I've never used before, and I'm using it now, and it's working actually really good. It's this um, Jim's EverSharp Film Trimmer, um, Harry B. Higley and Son. So I think Higley. Look up Higley. I don't know if they have a website. I'm sure they do. You can just look up um, Harry B. Higley and Sons online. And you can find they have a couple of these tools and stuff. And what this is, is this is a little um, edge trimmer. And it's got just a basic standard razor blade in here. And then it's got a bunch of these um, these little grooves in it. And you can put your, when you put your monocoat in, it'll cut it and it'll trim it. And it helps you kind of hold things straight. Now I've never used these until this today and I thought I would try it out. And it actually works really good. So let me show you how it works. Is you get it and you pick one of your points here and you get it going. And it just holds it, hold, you hold it gently, and you just move it like this. And what that does is it allows you to, to, to uh, cut a very relatively straight line like this. That's awesome. Boom. And now you have a pretty straight curve. So this is, I mean, a pretty straight edge. And this is really useful. Now, the thing about it is you notice that what if, how it's made and it's hard to show on on camera here but it's got all these little slat all these little slots so that means you can use a different one you know so you basically you won't dull your blade for a while you can use the same blade for quite some time because you have all these different points that you can use and the cool thing about it is it's offset a little bit so all you have to do is flip when you when you run out and you made all this whole if you use every single one of these slots and um, the razor blade is then dull in each one of those slots 
All you have to do is take this thing and take your razor blade, take it off and flip it over because it's offset, the hole's offset. So now the razor blade will kind of shift over a little bit and you'll get a whole brand new set of basically a sharp edge on your razor, on your razor blade. So this is really cool. Um, it wasn't that expensive, I forget how much it was. But um, again, it's this Jim's Ever Sharp Film Trimmer. And it works really, really nice and it makes a nice straight line. So it's a good thing to have. All right, so I'm done trimming now. I'm, I still have to come back here, but I'm gonna do that with a little bit of finer detail at that point. But on the on the major trailing edge and leading edge and such, I've gone over and I've overlapped. As you can see, I've overlapped to the bottom, and I've given myself about a quarter inch or so. And the reason you want to do that is because when you lay this down and it and it forms this seam, you don't want to have the seam on on your trailing edge on your leading edge, um, especially. Because that, that could allow possibility, there's a possibility that the monocoat or your covering could kind of come detached and that'll open up a basically a, a, a vent for air to get in and that could um, destroy your wing when you're flying. You could have a wing flutter, um, you can have all kinds of problems. So thing is you want to make sure you trim um, from the top. So that's why you work on the bottom first, the bottom of the wing, and then you come from the top and you basically wrap it around just a little bit. Um, the, lead, the trailing edge isn't as important to do that, but the leading edge for sure, you want to go ahead and have a little bit of a, um, an overlap along the leading edge and have your seam kind of below your wing instead of right. So here's your, and now it's upright. So now you want the seam on the bottom part of your wing. Okay, so I got the wing covered. Now, you know, covering monocoat and these other, other fabrics or materials you use for covering, it's always a work in progress, right? Because what happens is over time, um, you know, temperature changes, humidity, blah, 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 time, this, these things can some sag and, and, and such. So you do have to always be touching them up and you always wanna be checking them um, to make sure for example, like I was saying before, that you don't have any sort of open open seams or anything. You want to make sure that it's nice and, and secure um, before you fly. Uh, make sure nothing's coming off. So um, obviously, I need to put the ailerons on here. But here is the um, so I use the the uh, finer or the smaller iron, the detail iron, to get in here and work around the linkages. Now the cool thing is is that I could I basically just covered it. And when you heat it up, you know, it's basically a plastic. So when it shrinks, um, as long as you can move this, you're, you're fine, right? So I just, I just cut a couple pieces just to sort of cover up the, the gaps and things and just kind of put them in there. Um, and this won't even be visible. This is going to be within the airplane. You're not going to see it because the fuselage is going to be here. And of course, the ailerons are going to be here. So you're not going to see too much of that anyhow. But um, so here it is. It's, the wing is pretty much done. Um, I will, obviously I'll go back as I do this and before I finish up, I will check everything. And I think usually what happens is you kind of do this once and then you probably have to come back again and tighten it up because it takes a while. It takes a couple of times, I, I believe, to sort of get it to be, to get it to keep, keep it some, um, to keep that, that tautness. So anyhow, I will now um, put this down and I, I'm going to do like the ailerons and the control surfaces or the, or the, um, like the aileron and the rudder and such. I'll do that last. I'm probably going to move on to the yellow, I mean, to the um, uh, fuselage next. Um, anyhow, so I'm happy to be getting this done. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with monocoat or covering. I always like the way it, it is when it's finished, but I just kind of can't stand doing it. It's very cumbersome, especially with, you know, the wing. It's just always hitting it around and banging it on things. It's kind of a pain in the neck. But um, anyhow, and like I said, I never have done a perfect one of these, so I don't stress it because you're not going to tell when this thing's flying, you know, 300 feet above the ground or going by at whatever, how fast it is. You're not going to see a little wrinkle here or there, so I don't stress it. So, all right, let's move on to the fuselage next. Next. 